This video is brought to you by the supporters on Patreon. Hi guys, I'm here with a video showing you how I made the shoes for my Taronda cosplay. So at this point in the video, I have already traced out and cut out the patterns that I had drawn up onto EVA foam. I used reference photos to help me figure out how to draw up the pattern, however, if you would like to skip the process, then I have patterns available on my store Envy and Etsy. The lines you've currently seen me drawing on are the guidelines for the bubble pieces I will attach a little bit later. Next, I cut away the edge at an angle along the top of all the two side pieces of the shoe pieces or the pieces at the front of the foot. And I do this just because those two pieces need to connect at an angle so that I could get the right shape, like the right curve shaped to it. And cutting it at this angle just makes it easier to do that. Then I take my Dremel to sand down those edges and make those more smooth and even. This is going to help make that angle a better angle because it's a little bit rough when just cutting with scissors and it's going to help make that seam line where they're going to connect a lot more smooth and need less work to kind of uh, make it disappear. I also sand down that top and bottom edge of the back piece of the shoe since those are going to be glued on eventually and they need to be smoothed out before I glue them into place otherwise it's going to be hard to reach those corners. Once everything is sanded I start gluing things together and I'm using contact cement to do this. So first I start off by gluing the top edge of both shoes together. I'm using a heat gun to heat up the foam so that I can better shape it and round it out and mold it around my shoe so that it will sit the way that I want it to. Now that I've shaped things, I can start adding on the bevels. These bevels are 10 millimeter EVA foam bevels that I bought from Cosplay Crafts. I do have a link down in the description below, and I ask if you do plan to buy any supplies from them that you use my link because it helps me out and it's at no extra cost to you. When attaching bevels to one another, you want to make sure that the top edge of the bevel always flows into the bevel that you are attaching to it, which means you're going to have to attach a lot of things at an angle. I'm going to have an entirely different video explaining and thoroughly showing this to you guys. However, I have also kind of explained it a little bit more in some of my previous Toronto videos, so make sure to check that out and stay tuned to see the future video where I explain this better. Once the bevels are glued into place, I am placing that around the shoe, like both of the shoe pieces around the shoes that I plan to wear, and then marking a line at the points in which I need to add a glue and where the pieces are going to attach to one another. So this back piece is placed under the front piece of the shoe, and that's why I have to do this to make sure everything's sitting even, give myself a guideline to go off of so that it will fit when I have everything glued together and that it stays fitting after that.
Before gluing on this back piece, I need to make sure that all of the bevels are glued into place on the front section of the shoe as well as on the back section of the shoe. This is just going to make it easier when gluing the both front and back together. I use a heat gun to shape and mold the back piece of the shoe armor around my shoe. Another thing I do before gluing the front and back pieces together is dremel all of the edges. This is one of the reasons I wanted to attach the bevels before gluing the two main pieces of the armor together and that was so that I could make sure my dremel could get all of the edges of where I attached these bevels to smooth it all out and clean up those seams. The bitch in your arms will meander, but I will Now I can finally glue the front and back pieces of the shoe together and I do that using contact cement. Once that is all glued together, I go ahead and take my Dremel to sand down the bottom edge of her shoes just to make sure everything is nice and even. I filled in the seam with Bondo's Gap Filler or Spot and Glazing Putty, let that dry, and then sanded it down. Next, I'm using wood glue to prime the shoes for painting. I apply about three to five layers of wood glue total, and I should note that before applying the Bondo's Gap and Spot Putty, that I had already done about one or two layers of wood glue. I also like to mix in a little bit of water with my wood glue, just because I find it makes it go on a little bit more smoothly and thinly and kind of eliminate some of those brush strokes that happens when you apply it too thick or it gets too globby. Now I'm using my airbrush and I'm painting all the bevels silver. 
You totally don't have to have an airbrush in order to do this. You can paint it with spray paint, with acrylic paint, with whatever kind of paint you prefer. I just wanted to try out my airbrush for this project, so that's what I'm working with. Once the silver is dry, I tape it all off and then use my airbrush to paint the shoes white. Again, you don't need to use an airbrush, you can use acrylic paint or spray paint. I recommend finding a matte white paint because I find those go on a lot more opaquely. And while like the glossy white paints are really hard to get so to the point where you can't see the color of the foam or the color of the Bondo filler through the paint. It takes a lot more layers. However, with a matte spray paint in particular or a matte airbrush paint, I found it really easy to get that white paint down and down in a very opaque way with a lot less layering needed. Once the white was down, I then went in with a greenish blue color to shade around all of the edges. I chose this color for shading because this is the kind of tint her armor looked like it had and the kind of like shadow colors her armor looked like it had. After all of those layers of paint are down, I go ahead and remove the painter's tape because I won't be using the airbrush from this point out. I add a coat of clear glossy spray paint and then move on to the next step of painting which is adding in even more shading. I decided I wanted, wanted to add in a slightly more darker shade of shading like right right around the edges really tight in there I guess you could say and I did that just because I feel like it needed a little bit more depth since this green color is a little bit muted and the silver is also kind of muted and white is also obviously muted. I just needed something else in there to give it a little bit more of um, a contrast, I guess. And to do that, I took a darker teal colored paint and this is acrylic paint that I'm using and then I used a paintbrush or a couple different paintbrushes to just blend that out into the green shadowing, making sure not to go past that lighter green shadowing. So I kind of wanted to create a pretty gradient. 
finish these off with another coat of clear glossy spray paint and that is it for this build i hope you guys found this video helpful thanks for watching be sure to stick around to check out my other future videos as well as some of my older videos uh and yeah happy cosplaying bye